I wanted to take a moment to address the armchair theologians who have responded to uh, my videos. An armchair theologian is one who has a little bit of information, but doesn't understand that information in the context of the truth. Because they have just one part of it, they will not come to a correct judgment or conclusion. Same thing, judgment and conclusion. Armchair theologians are like Protestants in that they take it out of context. But theological inquiry, which is a method, makes sure that each part is kept within the context of the whole, and the whole is truth. I need to address for a moment then the way that God has ontologically directed men and how he has ontologically directed women. When the light of faith which is above men, comes from outside of man, and every man receives the same faith. Every man, no matter what age he lives in, no matter what his preference of belief is, he receives the same faith. For a woman, that faith illumines her emotions. She has ontologically this emotion first prior to reason, because of the nurturing aspect of her nature and because she's one generation removed from man. Man has as the first principle reason over emotion. Woman has as the first principle emotion over reason. It doesn't mean that men do not have emotions and should not have emotions or that women do not have reason and should not have reason. It's simply a matter of the order. So in theological inquiry, we begin with faith, which will enlighten both emotions and reason. That faith is based upon Jesus Christ revealing. All things begin with Christ. He is the beginning of all things. All things end in Christ. He is the end of all things. And when we say Christ, we mean the three persons of the Holy Trinity, one substantial God. So in theological inquiry, we must begin with divine revelation. We must begin with what Christ has revealed and handed to his apostles, and then given the apostles the authority to protect and defend those truths and to provide for the faithful through the sacramental grace of the church. If we forget this is the first principle, we will come to a false conclusion. So this is faith. This is the faith that enlightens reason. Reason is within man by his nature. And again, men ontologically have reason as their first principle, and that in order to assist them to protect, defend, and provide for. Women ontologically, because of one generation removed, have as their principle emotion, and that so that they may nurture. Within women then, because of the nurturing, they see more clearly the dangers to their children and to others. They see the problems more clearly. But men are called to see the solution to those problems. This causes a conflict. And let me be stereotypical here for a moment, but follow, stay with me. Women talk. They talk because they see problems. They say to men, this is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem. And men automatically are thinking of the solution. But a woman satisfies her emotion when she is able to talk out her problems and be heard. A man is, a man is not satisfied until he can come up with a solution. And so this causes a conflict between men and women. You know, in the past, women would go into the kitchen and prepare meals. That's because they nurture. In the kitchen preparing meals, they would talk about their feelings, about the problems. They didn't talk about solutions. This is where gossip comes from as the feminine vice. 
It doesn't mean that every time a woman speaks about a problem or a situation she's gossiping, but you can fall into it very easily. Men would go to the parlor. They wouldn't talk about problems or feelings. They would mention problems and then they talk about solutions. <clears throat> this is where these great men of history have risen above other men. They take counsel. They come up with solutions to the problems, which are based upon the light of faith and reason. And then they give them to women, and the women find the security in that, as we all find security in the truth. Women should not be involved in this process because men want to protect and defend. But now, because of the whole idea of equality, you have men and women always having to be together, always having to discuss problems and solutions together. And therefore, you have not raising men up to the level of the reason, but you have to lower men down to the level of emotion, make them effeminate. Look at the problems we have in the world today. Let's just use some examples like what's going on in Georgia what's going on in New York and Washington, D.C. You have this woke society that says we have to allow women to be in charge. And not only women, women that are minorities. And not only women that are minorities in what is called race by them, but also women that are in minorities when it comes to sexual preference. These women need to be in charge. They need to get together and talk about solutions and apply those. And the men need to stay out of it. This is what is causing much of the division in the world today and confusion and insecurity. I am advocating then for truth. I'm defending truth. I'm defending divine revelation. The priesthood, the episcopacy, is reserved to men, but to men, not boys, and not to the effeminate, as it has been in the modernist church, because of the woke idea that we're going to find equality by getting rid of all of these um, social constructs, they call them. It's been disastrous. It will continue to be disastrous. But one of the reasons the young don't trust my generation, I'm 60, is because we're the ones that dropped the ball. We're the ones that bought into all of the feminist things of the 70s. We're the ones who didn't stand up and defend and protect and provide for. Not all of us, of course. There are some that see the situation, the problems, and say, I'm going to stop complaining about it and do something. That's what we're trying to do here. But we're not going to get anywhere if we do not base our solution upon theological inquiry. We must start with Christ, not with the problem, and then try to work back to Christ. That's the disorder that's taking place right now. We'll start with the problem, we'll go to the councils, we'll go to the, to the uh, saints, We'll do all of that, but we won't put it first in the context of divine revelation and what Christ taught. Problems such as baptism of blood and desire and the state of the conscience issue are based upon this. This is why men can't come to a solution in their own mind as to the truth. Because they're not looking for the truth, they're trying to justify their own position by using the authority of the councils and of saints. And they're misquoting them because they're quoting them in English, not in their native language. And they're relying upon translators to translate correctly when most times they're not. Because if they translate it correctly, they won't get the imprimatur of the modernists and therefore they can't sell their books in the modernist bookstores. Be aware of this. So theological inquiry is simple. You start with Christ. That's the light of faith. You look how men, the patristics, those who sought truth, the church fathers, namely among them St. Augustine, the church councils, how men have always defended and protected 
the faith that Christ handed to the apostles and provided for the faithful what they need in order to be secure in their faith and in the truth. And then through that process, if you follow that process in that order, you will come to a conclusion, which will be a judgment. That judgment will be guaranteed to be true. And then that judgment will be able to direct, we will be able to direct as spiritual directors, as fathers, spiritual fathers, the faithful to act now in a moral, in a moral way, which means the correct means to a particular end. Whether that end be a proximate end or whether that end be remote. The remote end of all actions is God himself, the beatific vision. The beginning is God, the end is God. There are movements within a man that brings him to a proximate end, which will now take him to the next level and another end, proximate, and another proximate end that will lead him finally to the remote end. But nonetheless, this is the theological inquiry. It must be complete with all that Christ taught and all that the church has taught on a particular subject that has now been seen to be a problem. If we have the integrity of theological inquiry, if we learn to follow this as men, and really it, it's in the hands of priests who have the authority by God, the bishops who have the authority to protect, defend, and provide for, and to protect and defend bishops to protect and defend their priests and to provide for their priests and the priests to, to protect and defend and provide for the men of the parish so that they can protect and provide for their families. This is hierarchy. So theological inquiry requires hierarchy. That is what dogma is. Dogma is a defense of what Christ taught coming from authority. And so those armchair theologians who found a little bit of information and now opine about what is truth and they attack bishops and they attack theologians and they're doing it all based upon an emotion, which is usually fear or hatred or some other thing, some kind of prejudice against something or someone. They may find others who say, Yes, I agree with you. I, I understand. But that would be akin to the gossip that takes place. It must be based upon truth. So please trust. Please trust myself and others that we are following theological inquiry to come to the truth so that we have a correct judgment, so that we can guide in correct morals. This is... One of the reasons that I have put out the videos that I put out, I'm not attacking anyone's character. I'm attacking, not attacking, I'm sorry. I'm pointing out the fallacies within the theological inquiry and therefore the judgments that are being made. I'm going to put out another video that will directly respond to this, but I wanted this one first so that you understand from where I'm coming as I speak. And that it is not me responding out of emotion or out of hatred, but really out of reason enlightened by faith. And that is the only guarantee that we have, that it will begin with Christ and end in Christ, and therefore will bring you to the final end the beatific vision, to be before God and to see God and to be seen as you are, as God created you. I hope you understand and study well, and God bless.